What is up, everybody? It's your boy Rudolph Ortiz, episode 98, Mom's Basement MMA. And I really had the distinct pleasure to talk to my boy, Will the Franchise Dickey. This is an incredible guy. He's from the state of Wisconsin. He's one of the top ranked light heavyweights and heavyweights in that entire state. It's really a story about redemption and coming back and never being too old to pursue your dreams and accomplish the things in your life that are important to you. And that's exactly what Will's doing. Will talked a lot about, he was really open and he talked a lot about overcoming personal struggles in his life. Will's probably a guy and he would be the first to admit that he should be dead right now, but he was able to pull himself up, surround himself with the right people and pursue his passion in life, which is mixed martial arts. Hope you guys give this episode a listen. Please follow my boy, Will the Franchise Sticky, an amazing man. I really enjoyed this episode. I really enjoyed getting to know him better. Please check it out. Enjoy. This is Mom's Basement MMA, and I am absolutely stoked to have Will the Franchise Dickey on my show. He he is one of the fighters that I am proud to sponsor. This man competes in two different weight classes, light heavyweight and heavyweight. He's one of the most dangerous men in the state of Wisconsin and worldwide. Look at him, man. He's got the drip on. He's got the nice earrings in. He just, everything about this guy looks freaking fantastic. Will, I am happy to talk to you, man. How are you doing on this fabulous President's Day? Man, I feel, man, I'm just so happy. I'm so blessed, man. Thank you. I was looking forward to this interview so much. Nothing like, shout out to all my other podcasts, but this one I was literally looking forward to, man. Like, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just blessed to be in front of you, man. And uh, I just appreciate the hospitality, man. You, the, the, the drip, the drip, you've been nothing, man. I, you know, you and I talk a lot behind the scenes and stuff, and, uh, you know, you know, my circle small and stuff like that. That's that's just through a lot of years and stuff. But you know, you you've always had an ear for me, man. You've always give me the best the best advice, you know. And that's that's why I come to you for a lot. So first and foremost, thank you for that. But uh, man, it just feels good, man. I'm getting down to the wire here. I feel good. Um, just training my butt off, just uh, trying to get that little bit of the edge, you know. As yes, as we can see from my post last night, I was training as a gym till after one. I'm pretty. I'm, I'm guessing um from the last show that the main event didn't didn't uh, fight till like 1:30 a.m. So Trying to get my trying to get a custom training a little later now, but uh, everything's going good, man. I feel good. Weight's coming off, man. I just just feel 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 like a a, a a high 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 level athlete right now. What's amazing about you is like you're a big dude, like you're a gladiator, like you're freaking huge, and sure. and the fact that you can actually compete in two different weight classes, like the fact that you can make two hundred five is insane to me. I don't know how you do that, especially uh, uh, with us being old guys. And number two, the fact that you're able to uh, like ping back and forth between the two, like you don't really see that at this point in your career. Now, when you fight Lamont Stafford, I'm assuming that's going to be a heavyweight bout. Uh, 205. 205. Okay. So you're fighting Stafford at 205. Okay. Wow. Okay. I didn't know Stafford was 205 because he's freaking massive too. Talk to me a little bit about Lamont Stafford. This is a fight that they're bringing you in for. He's an Oklahoma City guy. You're going into this as the out-of-towner that nobody wants to see win. Like, you're the party wrecker. Tell me a little bit about what makes Lamont Stafford a very uh, tough fighter to have to prepare for and just kind of going into it, being like the guy that nobody wants to see win because when you fight in Wisconsin, it's the other way around. Everyone's going for you. Everyone wants to see you win. Now we're on – it's the opposite. Yeah, yeah. Lamont, he's a vet, a little bit older than me, thirty-seven. I know he's, I know he's, he's uh, defended his title seven times. But, you know, he he a killer too, man. I got all nothing respect for him. I just did this podcast, walk with the walk before the cage, got to do a little face off with him. Not really sure how that shit was supposed to go, but uh, he seemed like a respectful dude. He seems about his business, which, which, uh, which, 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 at my point of my career, like facing guys like that, I understand he's a dangerous man. You know, he's confident in his skills. He's not a goofy at all, nothing like that. But uh, yeah, I'm going into the lines there, man. Like, you know, I feel like nobody likes me out there except you guys, you know what I mean? So, you know, I'm just going to go there and with all respect, you know, it's his house, you know, regardless of how it goes, I'm just going to be respectful, go out there and uh, just do what I train to do. So I'm excited. 
One of the things that makes you a very special fighter is your knockout power is incredible. You finish guys in the very first round and most of the bouts that I've seen, like you're able to get a finish first, second round. Most of the time it's the first round. I think one of the things that's special about you that a lot of people don't know though, is your cardio. Like you are a cardio monster, but nobody really knows that because your bouts don't really go that long. Do you think that's a big advantage that you have going into this fight? It's huge. Huge to me. Um, yeah, I actually got amateur and pro. You know, I, I've been fighting way before the state was regulated. So a lot of my fights, I don't put a lot of stuff on YouTube. I think there's only a few fights up there because when I come to the cage, you know, it's, it's kind of, it's, 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 a, it's a blessing and a curse because as a marketing thing, it kind of sucks because people don't really know me. And that's one thing that I wish I would have turned around and put a lot more stuff on YouTube. But also it's a blessing because they don't, they can't really study me. But yeah, yeah, um, I just, I just, I've been blessed to have it with both hands, you know, and uh, I train like everybody's a champ in the world because early in my career, I never really trained that hard. I used to work out or I used to just really rely on my athletic ability and just didn't do things right. And uh, it led to a couple of my losses and stuff like that. And conditioning was that thing was, was, was a key factor in that. And uh, my whole career, uh, I've always been really athletic and stuff, and I've always battled myself. So, like, the conditioning to me is, like, when I know I'm conditioned, you literally got to knock me unconscious to stop me. You know what I mean? So, like, it, it's like it's like, a, it's like a mental thing to me. Like, you see me running 10 miles every single day, and it's not even overtraining because I feel good. It's just having that mindset to know that I can go in there for 25 minutes, and I'm on your ass. I'm on your ass the whole 25 minutes. You better stop me because I'm not stopping give up because you know I'm not here to give up I'm here to because I got everybody on my back you know my circle's small but my circle's dominant you know what I mean like yourself man I got everybody on my back and you know I'm fighting as an individual man we family we team man I got you all on my back so when I win you all win and vice versa man and I'll never embarrass none of you guys because you guys put my name behind you one of the things, Will, that um, I admire about you is your work ethic like you're constantly working you're constantly doing cardio, sparring, hitting mitts, like you're constantly at it. Like every single day I'm on the gram, I see you in the gym doing something. I don't know, with all due respect to Stafford, I, I know he's putting in the work. I know he's taking you seriously. But like, is it safe to say like nobody outworks you? Is it safe to say that nobody's putting in the time that you're putting in to make this dream happen? I'm not really sure what, what, what everybody else is doing, but this is all just for me. Like if I put in the work, when, when it comes to my work ethic, it's, 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 I've always then dealt with the mental part of this. You know, I've always been my work, my worst enemy with this and back to my conditioning. So when, when I work my hardest, then, I, then you ever hear the, 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 the phrase, the calm before the storm. Yes. The, the, the day before weigh-ins, when I know I've done everything correct, when I know I've done everything I could possibly do for this fight, Man, everything's it's, now. It's my time to perform. Now, now this is the fight is the reward. You know what I mean? And there's been so many fights that, thank gosh, I you know I've been I've been on the W end of it, the winning end of it, but I haven't worked hard. My guys would be like, "Have you trained hard?" And I'd be like, "Yeah," but you can't lie to yourself. I knew deep down I could, I did. So, you know, I just I'm at the tail end of my career, and pretty much I just don't want to embarrass anybody. Anybody that supports me, anybody that abuse me, anybody that clicks me, sponsor me. I just want them to know that I'm working my, I'm doing my part, you know, I'm doing, working my butt off. And, uh, you know, it is for me, everybody's like, yeah, it's for you, but really it's not for me because I get my blessings. I get my, the joy of this, see my man, like you, you know, you repping me and you, you happy because I want everybody happy. I want, you know, and I'm a winner. So winners win. So, you know, I just got to put the work in everything is on me to put the work in and I'm gonna do my part. So that's right. I think you've already won. I don't think you have to fight. I don't think you have to prove anything to anybody. Um, your resume speaks for itself. And about the age thing, I shit you not, I was at a fight this weekend. I saw a man, I'm not kidding, I'm not making this up, 57 years old, 57, oh. heavyweight, knocked a man out, 57. Yeah. You know, he was a big old bowling ball, but you know what, man? Like, he went in there, it wasn't pretty, but he put in the work, and he knocked a man unconscious at almost 60 years old, so... You know what? I, I, I say this, man, if like if you take care of your body, if you take care of you mentally, I think I really think like you can do really anything that you want to do. I mean, look at Tom Brady. I know it's a totally different sport. I, I, I'm not trying to compare football to MMA. I'm not trying to do that. But what I am saying is 
any sort of sport at your level is a young man's game. But if you do all the right things and make all the right decisions, I think you can make that decision for yourself or when you want to quit, not anybody else, not people like me, not people on the outside. I think it's entirely going to be up to you. Yeah, I appreciate it. I've always said this. If I can say one thing about that is that fighting is a beautiful thing. Everybody's got fight in them. It's in our DNA. Woman, male, female, whatever. It's in our DNA. You don't have to jump 10 feet in the air. You don't have to run a 4-240 to be a fighter. That's why you see so many people out there like Sam Elvey and stuff like that be, become fighters and very successful at fighting. You know, the beauty of fighting is, like I said, you don't have to jump 10 feet in the air. You don't have to run a 4 40 Take care of your body. Look at the champ of the UFC. He's 43. You know what I mean? I'm 36. I, I, I hope I don't fight that long. But it's pretty much on me. How well do I want to take care of my body and stuff like you said? So, you know, that's, 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 that's the beauty of fighting. So, This sport has evolved so much since you have been competing professionally. You started the game professionally in 2009, and here we are. It's 2022. I think when you first started, it's safe to say, like, we thought of MMA as cage fighting, right? And it was like, oh, my God, like, what the fuck are these guys doing? This is fucking crazy. But now it's on ESPN. Like, you can pretty much, from your couch, watch any fight in the world that you want. Like, all this technology, uh, all of these things that are out there, like podcasts, like, none of this stuff existed. You've spent most of your career as a pioneer in this game. There was no YouTube. There was no podcast. There was no fight pass. None of this stuff existed. And when you wanted to get people to go to your fights, it was the old fashioned way. It was word of mouth. It was like stapling flyers to like telephone poles and getting people to come. And now you see Instagram, social media take off, everything. You probably also seen a lot of people come and go in, in, in this whole fighting career that you've had. So when you look at all these young bucks that are coming up, they're able to benefit off of people like you who've trailblazed and like done all the hard work and brought this into the mainstream. What kind of advice would you give a young fighter coming onto the scene, uh, you, you know, from your own experience? Like if there's something that you wish a young Will Dickey knew back in 2008, 2009, what would you tell him? First of all, well said. Well said. I didn't really think of it like that, but that's well said. Um, for, these young, for these young fighters, for those millennials, man, just, just stay in the gym. Surround yourself with uh, with good people. Get your circle strong and just just trust the process. You know, I say it all the time. And I, every, every interview I do, you know, I just wish I were stayed in the gym a little bit more. You know what I mean? So all you up-and-comers, first of all, just go in the gym. Find yourself a gym and uh, just get some good people around you and trust the process. You know, you got to start somewhere to be somewhere. So that's, that's, that's the advice I give them. Hey, um, nothing – yeah, sage advice. When I look at your career – and all the time that's gone by, you took a break from MMA for a few years, but then you come back. I, I assumed just looking at everything, it's like, okay, when you see somebody take a break like that, it's like, hey, I got other things going on in my life. Fighting's not really a priority. These things happen from time to time. You come back, though, in 2019. Tell me, like, what was going in your mind? Like, what made you decide, like, yep, I'm ready to come back. And when you come back, you're not fighting a can. You're fighting like a guy who's 14 and six. So you got to tell me what went through your mind. Why did you decide to like jump back in the saddle and against like a really scary dude like Cully Butterfield? Well, I'm, 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 I'm going to let it be known right here. You know, a lot of my, a lot of my day one guys noticed, but, uh, you know, from, from, from about 2011, you know, fighting has been a blessing and a curse for me. From about 2011 until about 2019, I was battling opiate addiction. You know, something undercover that I was battling. I hurt my shoulder really bad. I ripped my shoulder off my arm, never got surgery. Ended up winning back-to-back state championships for Combat USA. But uh, I was I was, I was, was battling OB addiction. And uh, it took me that long to get sober, to really get sober, really get it out of my mindset. And uh, when I got, I was just thinking to myself, I'm like, man, I was beating all these guys. And my mind wasn't right. I wasn't training that hard. I was like, you know, what if, you know, like, let's, you know, obviously there was a lot of push from my, my people and stuff like that. And I had that burning inside me, but I was just like, man, let me just see how I can do sober. Like, like, let me just see how good I am sober. Cause I know I was knocking everybody out messed up mm -hmm. high as hell. You know what I mean? And, and you know, I'm letting you know, there's no, this I respect is something that I've always said after my fights, battling addiction and stuff like that, being sober. Now I've been, I've been six years sober. So coming back, I felt like, 
the, the battle's already won. You know, I already beat, I already beat everything. I already beat all, all my demons and stuff like that. And uh, I wanted to fight the toughest. I wanted to see how good I was. And boy, the rest is history. I went in there, took care of business in a minute, something. I felt so good. Like I've never felt that good before in a fight. And the train's been rolling ever since. So that's an inc- that's incredible. So first and foremost, uh, I respect you in a lot, and for you to have the courage to talk about that openly, it says a lot about you as a man. Sure. Um, that was something <clears throat> that really like hits close to my heart. Uh, I lost my best friend because of uh, opioid addiction. Um, he got he he uh, made he didn't make the best decisions um, after you know we uh, became really close in the military. He didn't make the best decisions after he got out. Um, he got he got in with the wrong crowd, made some bad decisions, got hooked up with uh, you know the opioid thing. He realized he had a problem. But then it came too late. He actually overdosed on a drug called methadone, which is something that they give people to try to get them off of some of the junk. But it, it'll kill you um, if you don't do it correctly. And, you know, 26 years old, that was it. And I, I don't think like when it comes to addiction, people really understand the seriousness of like the of opioids and like the effect it can have on somebody. So you should like by all accounts, you should probably be like my friend. You should probably be dead number one, yeah, but you're absolutely. here, you absolutely. battled those demons. This is all gravy for you then. Like you've absolutely. probably, you've probably. I've already won the battle. You probably sit back and you're just like, Jesus, dude, I shouldn't even fucking be here right now. Man, you, I'm telling you, like, like this is all educational purposes only. I share this because there's so many people living in the club. Nobody knew. Nobody knew my, you know, they probably, they may, might have had an idea that will, you know, the franchise getting, you know, losing some fights. I started on their feet at 20 some fights. You know, some people probably knew, but yeah, the, the, the same sport I fell in love with and the same doctors I trusted ended up turning me out on opioids. And, you know, I come from the country. I come from Michigan. You know, we drink out there. We don't do pills and stuff like that. So the educational purpose wasn't, it, it was kind of brushed underneath the rug back in 2011, 2012. It wasn't such a big thing. And, it kind of got me before I even knew it. And uh, yeah, it, it gets me emotional talking about it, but you know, I'm, I'm one of the lucky ones, you know, I came out shiny on the other side and uh, I made a choice. I was like, let me see how good, you know, I can do sober. And it's just been so easy, you know? And uh, I just want to make sure, you know, I just wanted to put it like kind of like a dab on my career and be like this, none of this shit was, it was worth it. You know, when all my boys were in college, started 401 OKs, going to the military and I chose fighting, that and piss it away like so many athletes out there mm-hmm. over drugs, girls, money, drinking, stuff like that. So, like when I say I got the weight of the shoulders, yeah, it's all my supporters, but it's really I'm battling myself. I always say I'm battling myself, you know, and, uh, you know, everything's been going my way. You know, I like I said, I've been six years sober. I feel as good as I can. I like it better than I've ever been. And uh, my heart goes out to you and your boy, man. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I ended that way, but, you know, I mean, you, you know, I, 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 he's with me every day though, man. Like I, I, I think about him every single day and, um, you know, he was the kind of one that like introduced me to the world of MMA. Like I was like, I didn't really like watch it. He was like a huge John Jones fan. I'm like, who's this guy? And like, he forced me to like watch this shit, like, you know, way back in the day. And, uh, so we did. And, it, it's kind of cool because, like, I don't know if this place would have existed had it not been for a couple other things I was dealing with. But it was mostly, like, just him planting that seed in me all those years ago. Like, That's yo, beautiful. man, this is, this is awesome, man. You should check this out. Because um, fighting is a relatively new thing. It's brand new. And it's brand new. And, like, you've almost seen everything come f- full circle. Like, like we were talking about, it's mainstream now. And... I think you're still a young guy. And if you want to, you could continue to fight. If you don't want to do the weight cuts anymore, you could continue to easily do this well into your forties. One of the things I want to know is like, what does a successful 2022 look like for you? Because I am shocked. You have been in this game for a long time, but you've never had an opportunity to go to like Bellator PFL UFC and I told you the other day in the, your DMs I was like I had a dream about you I had a dream yeah. that you made it into Bellator and you knocked some and dude out and you knocked some dude out like what is it going to take in your mind to like get an opportunity like that man just just trust the process 
I, I listened the other day or two days ago, I, I put up my record. I had five wins and then I had two wins that I should have won. And those were the, when, when, when I, when those two wins, the two losses I had, those, when I, when I fought Jason Brills, the winner of that was going back to the, going to the league. That was my big shot. Mm -hmm. That was one of my lowest points in my opiate addiction. As you mm -hmm. can see, right after my second loss, that's when I took my five years off. That's when I was like, look, something's got to change. Like mm -hmm. if fighting is what I want to do. Actually, it wasn't even, the mindset wasn't even then. Not talking about opiate addiction no more, but as you can see, after that second loss, in my head, I was done. Mm -hmm. I quit. I was a loser. I was like, look, I quit on myself. But to answer your question, coming back sober, 2022 to me is just keep on winning. Bring bring the people that are special around me with me and just trust the process. I got a great management and CMGT. I got a great gym, Red Schaefer. Coach B's got my back all the way. I got amazing sponsors like yourself. I got a lot of people behind me. I got good groups of people behind me and you are who you, who you, who you hang with. You know what I mean? And, uh, I'm finally in a point of my, my, my career where I don't have to do much thinking. I just get to show up and just, just, just do what I got to do. Everything's laid out for me. I win. I'm going to the league. I'm going to Bellator. All I got to do is win. Hence back to the reason I'm training all the time. I'm in the gym. I'm doing everything right. Because like the old saying, old saying goes, you know, it's, it's, it's better now than later. You know, it's, it's, you know, so I guess for 2022 is just get, get beyond Lamont. And uh, just, just, just trust my management and CMGT. She's been really good to me. And uh, my boy Nyquil just, just dominated in Bellator. Went out there, got a KO. In, I think in the first or second round, he a jujitsu guy. So, you know, you know, our, our, our banner's small, but uh, we're making our wave in Bellator. So that's 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 what 2022 looks like. I did bet on your boy. Tell him thank you. Uh, I appreciate I appreciate uh, him hey, making, him making me some money. I wanted to kind of shift gears a little bit and get your opinion on kind of a tough subject to talk about, but I don't think unless you people, unless people really did research on you, they may not know you were supposed to fight Justin Thornton. And yep. he was the man yeah. that unfortunately yeah. sustained That's a major right. injury in a bare knuckle fight. And it took, it, it took his life. You were supposed to fight this guy. The fight falls through, and then that happens like a month or two later. That made news all over the world. And I, I, I sit back, and because I'm not a fighter, like when I'm watching a fight in person like I did the other day, when you see violence, I think the TV kind of dehumanizes, dehumanizes it in a way because we're far, further removed for it, right? We just see it. A fighter gets injured. They throw up a commercial. They'll wheel the guy out of there. And then all of a sudden, two brand new guys show up, right? And it's like, oh, shit. I hope that guy's okay. When you're watching a fight up in close by a cage, you don't, you see everything, good, bad, and ugly. And when I was there, I saw guys, like, just hearing the impact of some of these strikes that they would take. Um, the the blood, like when you're two feet away from a guy with blood pouring out of his mouth, out of his freaking uh, cut on his eye, like it reminds you like, oh shit, these are gladiators and the consequences are real, man. Like this shit is not a game. Like it's entertaining to people like me. Yes. But like this shit isn't a game. It's as close to a fight to the death that we can get in this era. So your opinion on bare knuckle and the thing that happened with Justin, I think every fighter knows when they're getting ready to go into the cage that you're kind of at peace with everything. It's like, I accept that those things, that's part of the business. That's part of the game. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to assume that risk. When, when you found out the news about Justin, it, 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 did it like hit you harder because you're supposed to compete against him? And did it kind of make you like pause and be like, man, is this really worth it? Like, what am I doing? Or like, what's your mindset like? Because that would kind of screw me up, I think, if I were in your position. It it, it did. I, I tell you what, you know, I, I I got a big heart. So like, it did hit me home. I didn't even know the kid, you know what I mean? And uh, it did hit home a little bit. I don't know why it hit home, but I knew I was supposed to fight him. Something went on between the promotion and stuff. It didn't happen. I ended up fighting somebody else. But yeah, it did hit home a little bit. And my heart goes out to him and his family, man. And it's just like, that can happen to any of us. You know right. what I mean? Like your whole life, your whole, 
your whole life you've been learning, you know, protect your head and protect everything in, in sports, you know, as you, as, as you grow up playing sports and stuff like that, you only got one mind. And, uh, I guess, I guess for a guy like me, you know, I just, uh, I just try not to, to dwell on that stuff. I know what I'm up to, I'm going know what I'm up against. And, uh, I guess what got me through all these fights is just thinking that mentally, not sane, but thinking mentally, it can never happen to me because you don't want to dwell on that stuff, even though it can happen to you. But I guess if, if it did happen to me, you know, I guess it, 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 I'd be at peace with it. You know what I mean? Like it'd be, it'd be, it'd be, uh, it, it's my identity fighting is what I, you know, people know me as, you know, as an athlete. And, uh, if I went out that way, it, 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 it in not a weird way, it'd be kind of, kind of be special, you know, but, uh, you know, I don't have kids and stuff like that, but, uh, I just try not to think of that stuff, you know what I mean? And uh, my heart goes out to Justin and his family, you know, but. I think it's one of, yeah, I think it's one of those things, Will, where it's like when you're in the cage, like if you start thinking too much about that kind of stuff, you're going to hesitate. You get hesitant. You hesitate a nanosecond. You, that's how you get freaking destroyed. Right. That's how you get destroyed. Like you kind of have to like throw, I don't, I hate to say throw caution into the wind, but it's like one of those things where it's like, I got to focus at the task at hand, which is, which is putting this grown man to sleep. That's what I need to do. And th- that's a gift that you were born with. And when you like look forward, would you ever be interested? Like somebody with like your amount of knowledge with being in the, uh, in this game, as long as you have, like, would you ever be interested in like going into coaching or anything like that? Like, like what um, kind of like your long-term plan, because we know like you're not going to fight till you're 60 years old, probably not. <laughs> so how are you going to like be a part of this game when you do decide that, you know what, like my time in the, in the, in the ring's done. Yeah. Just, that's, that's a great question. Yeah. Everything's laid out. You know what I mean? First, first thing is fighting, making the name. I already got the name around here. That's why I make a bell tour or something like that because you know, the name Will the Franchise Dickey, you know, sounds cool. But Will the Franchise Dickey, Bellator Vet, sounds cooler. You know what I mean? So I try to wrap my city, Green Bay, as much as I can. Green Bay, Manitowoc, because I do want to open up a sports bar, make it, you know, put a cage around it, get somebody in there to draw all the pioneers of Wisconsin on the walls, have pros versus Joes, open up a small gym, you know, just have different ways of income and stuff like that. Different ways. You know, my bar wants to be more of a man cave setting and then have a gym for like underprivileged kids that come here, man, come in here and hang out in here, man. I'll have a TV set up, we'll have the video games, we'll have the gym, we'll have the free gist for the kids, we'll have all that stuff. So, but it all, it all ends on me first. Work hard, get to the next league because even though I know I can do it now because I got a name, it's just, it's just, it's just way cooler with Bellator Vet behind it. You know what I mean? And uh, I just want to give back because a lot of people give back to me, you know, whether they like my stuff or they watch my reviews, they say anything positive, man. People say so much positive stuff on my, on my Instagram. And I know it's from their heart, so that, that means so much to me. Like, I don't need money. I don't need material items. I don't need none of that. All that stuff is bonuses. Just how people just respond, like, oh, my gosh, you're such an inspiration. You know, people coming, young kids growing up, you know, coming up in the game, asking me for advice. I take that, that man, that, that, that makes my heart so warm, man, because uh, I am an OG in this sport, and uh, I do got a big heart. And even though I, made, I didn't make the best decisions, I still strive myself at being a man, and I stuck to the code, you know, and uh, – I just, I just want to get back as much as, uh, as much as people's giving me. And, uh, but first it's just winning these fights, getting the Bellator. And then after that, then it's open up my establishment, my bar, my gym, stuff like that. Maybe a barber shop. Heck yeah. the strength of people supported me, my name. That's it. So. I think that's one of the fat you're hitting on some things that like make this sport such a beautiful thing. Why? Well, the reason why I like MMA so much is because, I don't care really what your back, dude. I have talked to people from all walks of life. I have had people that have like been homeless. Uh, I've talked to people that have committed felonies, and they've been they're, they're on my show after like four years in prison, five years in prison. I've talked to guys that are police officers. I've talked to guys that are college kids, like. This sport attracts people from all walks of life. Some people have made some fucked up, terrible decisions in the past. But you know what? Like, this is like one of those things that brings people together and like, hey, I don't care where you come from. As long as that stuff's behind you and like 
you know, the new you is the new you. You've paid your debt to society. Like, who are we as society to, like, tell you you're not a good guy or you're a bad guy or something like that? That's not for me. I'm not about that. I think everyone should get a second chance. And for you, somebody who struggled with opioid addiction, to to put that in your past, that number one, most people can't do that. But to put that in your past, to find fighting, and now you're interacting with all these people, probably similar to some of the ones that I just said. Is that something that like really makes the sport special to you? Like, can you talk about just some of the amazing people that you've met just by being an athlete? Man, I've met, I've met people from all walks of life, business people, strugglers, thuggers, everything. I've met all, and it's we all, all got one common denominator. denominator. We love the sport of fighting and whether you're, 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 you're a wannabe gangster or a young cat, a professional, you're all on the same lane talking about fighting. You're the same person. And that's one thing I love, you know what I mean? And it's, you know, fighting so forgiving, like for a lot of people that don't have direction, young guys coming up, fighting is one of those things where, like I said, you don't got to jump 10 feet in the air, run a 4 two forty. Fighting saved my life in so many other areas. Yeah, it was, it was me with opiate addiction. I'm very open with that. But it could have been a lot worse. You know what I mean? Like, could have been a lot worse. And uh, that's what I love about fighting. Like, you get there, you you get around some good people, and you listen to them. Man, the rest is history, man. You could turn how, – how many professional boxers, professional fighters, like you said, come from the slums, from the straight slums, successful as hell because they struck – I mean, well, my, my man in boxing right now, who's, who's Mayweather is uh, Tank Davis. He, he comes from Baltimore. Mm-hmm. Boy, they don't play over there. They don't play over there at all. And uh, all his friends, he said he lost like 20-some friends by the time he was like 21 or something. And he got out of there. And that's, that's just one thing. It gets it gets, it gets my skin crawling talking about it. You know what I mean? And uh, I tell you what, there are two cities I've been in that um, – three, actually. I'll name them. Uh, Baltimore, that's one of them. Milwaukee is the other. And Rochester, New York. I don't know if people really know much about Rochester, New York, but I'll tell you what, those are three places I've been at. And it's, there's two sides to them. There's like a pretty face to those places where anyone can go to and feel relatively welcome. I don't care what you look like. You could be a white dude, an Asian dude, doesn't really matter. You go a few blocks away from that though. And it's a different story. Uh, I, I have been to Milwaukee. I have been to some places of Milwaukee that I don't think I was supposed to be at. And I was like, holy shit, I need to get the fuck out of here. And, and um, those places that you mentioned, it's like that in Baltimore, Rochester, New York. That's another gritty place, man, where it's like the boxing gym is the only thing they got that's keeping these kids not in jail or dead. Like, I hate to say that, but, and it, it's crazy, but it's true. Like, true. unless you're from the hood or unless you've been in one of those places, like me, I'm not from the hood, but I've been in those types of places. It's like, without this boxing gym, that that's the only source of, like, normalcy some of these kids have. Yeah, I've, I've always said poverty is not a choice. You know, when, when, when you're associated, you know, being a part of an organization or a gang is not a choice. And a lot of these, lot of these kids are out, like, not around, or whatever you want to say, they kind of glorify that, but you know, that's because they got somewhere else to go. A lot, a, lot, a lot of these inner city kids, they don't got nowhere else to go. So I always said poverty's not a choice for these young kids and being a part of a gang is really not a choice either. So, you know, they, they, they get pulled in so many different directions. So anybody that glorifies that, you know, being a part of something like fighting like that, that that'll definitely strain you out being around positive people. So And it takes courage to like break the cycle. Like um, uh, to, your, to your point, it, don't, it, it becomes normal. So what I mean by that is like, if you grow up in poverty and you're from a place like Baltimore, you're from a place like Milwaukee and your dad was in prison or he's dead. Um, all, your, your your, your, all, all your uncles are gangbangers. Half of them are dead too. Uh, half of them are in and out of jail. Your, your, your big brother, he went in the gang before like your sister's knocked up by some other yeah. gang member. Like, like for us on the outside, we talk about that. We're like, wow, that's dysfunctional. It shouldn't be like that. But when you're a kid and that's all you know, you you're going to go into that. You're going to get into that. Um, and it takes a lot of courage and it takes a lot of bravery to be like, you know what? I'm not going down this path. I'm going to make my own. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And shout out to all those kids that have done that. You know what I mean? And uh, Because it's not easy. I mean, it's not easy. Not. It's not easy. Well, like you're an amazing guy, man. Like I feel like fighting 
the the fighting part of you is honestly the most boring part of you. I, I, ironically enough, like yeah, it's all great and well, but like just you have a lot of like energy and charisma around you and you're the type of guy that um i think a lot of people can just learn from it doesn't really you don't have to be a fighter to learn from anybody like life is hard man and like we all make mistakes and you're proof that like your past doesn't define you like you could be you could be in a really rough spot but with the right people around you and with enough work ethic, like you can climb out of almost any hole. And I think you're walking proof of that, man. Appreciate that, man. I really do. I appreciate that. And, uh, so you're always a winner to me, man. I don't care. You never have to hey, fight. You're a again. man though, man, you and I click from day one. And I appreciate <laughs> that. Like I'm never too, I'm never too one way to ask for advice. You always give me the best advice. I don't know if you notice, I'm always in your DMS asking you this, asking you that. So I really appreciate that, man. Like I always try to, my group, my circle around me, I try, I try to bring the best people around me and they define me. So like, I really appreciate everything you've done to me, every talk you've had with me, every interaction, man, that this, this shit helps me so much because a big guy like me, I don't really have many people to talk to or trust to talk to. And you've been one of them. So bless your heart for that. Well, oh, it, it, it's all love. Will. you're a special dude. And I want this, I want your dream to happen for you. Like, Good sure. people deserve good things to happen to them. But with the fighting game, it's not easy, man. Like it's, it's, it's hard to promote fights. It's hard to get opportunities to go out there and talk about fights unless you're in the UFC. I don't care. Like that's it. If you're in the UFC, it's a lot easier, but for everybody else, that's like 99.999% of all the other fighters out there. It's sure. hard. Like it's hard out there and it shouldn't have to be like that. And I hope I'm doing my small part. I'm hope, I hope I'm making a difference and I hope I'm giving a platform to the guys that are good the as hell. The, that are good as hell. They just, the opportunities just aren't there yet for whatever reason. Um, so the time to support guys like Will is now, not when they make it to the UFC, not when they make it to Bellator. Like you can be, it's okay to be a fan now. Go to these fights, go to Oklahoma City, go watch Will win and, um, and, and, and support him, man. Support the brand. That's what it's really all about. Will, I want to give you the last word. You're just an amazing guy. You're going to have to come back after you beat this guy. And I'm going to talk to you a heck of a lot more. T shout out the people in your life that you would like to, whether you uh, want to talk about your lady, whether you want to talk about your homies or uh, your sponsors or whatever you want to do. I want to give you the last word. Man, I just want to say, first of all, bless your heart, bro. I appreciate it, man. You've been, you've been like, a, you, I know I just met you a couple months ago. But man, the energy you give me is like, it's like a brother, bro, like a brother for life. So I appreciate that. My girlfriend's been a big, 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 big uh, fan of mine, Stephanie. Bless her heart. All my sponsors, man. Uh, I'm probably gonna chop a lot of these up. My, uh, Mikey, Mikey Magnum, Kimmy, uh, Calf Kick Sports, uh, mostly MMA. Uh, Coach B, thank you for everything, man. You've been you've been like a father to me. Uh, Coach Red, give me a chance, man. I told you I'll never embarrass you. My management, MCMGT. Um, uh, the CBD department, you guys always have my back. And uh, just everybody out there supporting me, man. I appreciate it. I see every view. I see every click. I see everything. I try to get it back to all you guys. I appreciate all the kind words. Um, I do this essentially for y'all, man, all my supporters. So, Anybody else on Instagram supported me? Anybody watching this supported me? You ever having a downtime, a rough day? Man, come to Uncle Franchise, man. Slide in my DMs, man. You need ask me anything, I got you. I got you. It's not that tough, man. So come holler at your boy. <laughs> That's right, baby. Uh, Will, the franchise sticky. Always a pleasure, my man. We'll be doing it again soon.